That is a great question <clears throat> because it's not the same kind of thing. I compare it to the Burj Al Khalifa, which took six years to build. It's not the same kind of thing where it's just a matter of scale. You know, if you're going to build something that big, you can't do it overnight. <clears throat> um, but there are some things that you need in place. When I stand up and describe HBM, which is the fundamental new technology with seven years of, uh, of engineering effort in there, when I stand up and describe it, I lay out the two or three most important points about it. The fact that it can run slow and therefore um, not consume a great deal of energy. The fact that it is amazingly wide at 1024 bits per chip, 4096 bits across a Fiji, <coughs> um, the half a terabyte of bandwidth that it offers. Um, when I sum it up in those three or four numbers it sounds like it ought to be well, how hard is it to build a, a building that's just 800 metres tall? You just build one that's 799 metres, you put another metre on top and you're done. Yeah. <clears throat> if I sum it up in those three little numbers, it seems like it ought to be easy. But there's a lot of, a lot of new stuff that has to be built for that to work. The memory is physically very different from before. If you look at the, um, the GPU die, we don't have one in the room at the moment, but if you look at it, you can see these little stacks, four stacks of memory, each of which is five wafers thick. These wafers have to be layered on top of each other with a tolerance that is down to submicron levels in some places. You have to take a standard wafer and you have to narrow it down to, I think it's about 70 microns thickness, um, so that it kind of flexes like paper or, or even softer than paper when you when you move it around. There are a number of physical engineering problems as well as the fact that we had to have a very robust 28 nanometer manufacturing process <coughs> um, for, for some other reasons um, which meant that we we could only actually complete the process around now. Nothing in the in the past said you can build it now. It's not that we were late. We were, some of what we were doing was waiting for technology to be in place. The interposer is a highly complex piece of uh, microelectronics, the like of which has never been produced before. That's completely new. And interestingly, it's separate from HBM. Although we have an interposer there, anyone who builds their own HBM-based GPU or CPU will need to design their own interposer. And there's nothing that they get from our having designed it. There's a lot of new stuff that needed to be done. In that sense, it's actually rather different from building the world's tallest building. So HBM solves a whole bunch of problems, and one of the pleasant surprises of the problems it solves, because in the end it's, it's there to solve technical problems primarily, one of the pleasant surprises is that it addresses this issue of form factor, how big a PC needs to be. Um, because when you build a GPU with HBM on it, it's barely any larger than a GPU without HBM, you end up with a much smaller PCB because you no longer have to dot 32 different memory chips, or actually 16 more likely memory chips, around the GPU. That smaller form factor means that we can take an enthusiast performance uh, like the 390X, say, which is something like a 10 or 11 inch board or even longer um, for some manufacturers, and we can squeeze it down I mean, to a 7.5 inch board. And that's really fundamentally because we've taken the, the chips that used to sit around the GPU and we've built all that functionality into the GPU itself. So we've been able to squish it down from 11 or 12 inches to, to this 7.5 inches. And as I mentioned with HBM, absolutely it will help with tablets and phones and things like that in the future as well. So the, the APUs that we build where we integrate a, a CPU and a GPU into a single die, Absolutely, we will at some point in the future, and I can't talk about timetable, we will at some point in the future bring HBM into that mix as well and deliver a greater, greater and even better experience there. This integration is going on throughout the industry and I look forward to the day when, when I can point backwards in time, maybe in, I don't know what the year would be, <clears throat> but I'll point back and say, look, in 2015 I told you phones would end up with HBM and here's one. It'll happen. We are not allowing customization of the R9 Fury X. Um, that is our stated intention at the moment. I guess we could revise that at some point in the future, <coughs> but right now, <coughs> absolutely, there is no variation of those. With one exception, there's a rather nice faceplate on there which is connected with uh, Allen screws, um, and we're going to offer to anyone who wants it, um, you can download the 3D model, and you'll be able to take a 3D printer and customize um, in that kind of way. So if you want to put picture of uh, yourself or, uh, or something that you care about, a logo from a game that you love, something like that, you'll be able to put that on the faceplate. That, that will be uh, allowed. 
but the AIB partners uh, won't be allowed to customize this. Let's keep this stable and solid uh, and we'll allow more experimentation with the future products that we come to. Okay.